New King James, 1 John, chapter 3, first three verses. 1 John, chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Yes. Verse number three. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Go to your left. First Thessalonians chapter four. Thirteen following. Man of God by the Spirit of God says, I do not want you to be ignorant. Brother, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. How is he going to bring him, bring them if they're not with him? So that answer the question, all of your loved ones who have died in the Lord Jesus, they are there with Jesus. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Meaning what? The final authority of our constitution. For this we say by the constitution of heaven. That we who are alive. He talking about me. I don't know about you. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, he ain't going to say nobody else. Say the Lord himself, the Lord himself. will descend from heaven. How is he going to descend if he hasn't ascended? With a shout. With the voice of an archangel. With the trumpet of God. All we know is about the trumpet. But the trumpet comes number three. Number one. Shout. What are you going to shout? Don't know. Maybe you're going to tell Jesus, go get your bride. Voice of an archangel. The trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain, shall be caught up. Underline that word caught up. Because those who do not believe in a rapture will tell you the word rapture is not in the Bible. But that word caught up is the same thing. Or to snatch. 
you know, there are little rabbits or something, and here comes a hawk. <laughs> Gone. Shall be snatched together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Go ahead and have your seats. I'm going to talk about this. Let us see how far we can go today. We can pick it up. Later on, as much as I talk to people all around, everywhere I go, I ask them a question. What is the next big event? You ask a Republican. What's the next big event? We don't know what's going to happen to Trump. Maybe 2024. He will come back. We don't know whether he go to jail or not. See now, this is the main event for them. You ask somebody else. We don't know what's going to happen to Joe Biden. We don't know what's going to happen to his son. We don't know what will happen in 2024 election. Ask somebody else. What's the next big event? We don't know what Russia will do. We don't know what the rocket man will do. Oh, I'm sorry, the president of uh, North Korea. We don't know. Everybody is in the fear. We don't know when China is going to move and take over Taiwan. We don't know when Iran will attack. Come on, folks. And us, the children of God, Washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we join up with them and we never talk about the next big event. And so this is a brand new year. Happy New Year. I want you to look forward to this every single day. This Next big event, you know, Pastor David Jeremiah, he's about to come up with the book, The Great Disappearing. That's a new event. Or we're going to call it Keep the Main Thing, Main Thing. Or The Great Escape. But I like this one. Are you rapture ready? Are you ready to be snatched? The next main event. And the scripture I there read. Who loves his appearing will live holy life. It is very quiet here. Let me break it down. They go together. If you love his appearing, you will live holy. You don't live holy because you are not looking forward to him coming. Let me break it down again. If your main thing is maybe today he will come you will live holy that day
What's the main thing you are hoping for? Bible says, and, and for those of you who are students of the word of God, let me talk to you. In a Bible, not only one man, Bible says out of the mouth of two or three, every word shall be established. Any time in the New Testament, when a man of God is talking about the second coming, the next word will be holiness. See, all, all those people who are preaching holiness, 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 why don't you start preaching about the second coming and then talk about the holiness? Let me, just, let me just give you some idea. I just read you from gospel, I mean from John. John, the beloved of God, said, 1 John 3, 1, 2, 3. He said, all those who love his appearing. But you know what? We don't love his appearing. You know why? Ooh, I got a new car. Let me ride it. Let me enjoy it for a while. I bought a new house. Let me enjoy. See, 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 see. You are not loving his appearing. So we talk to John. John, what do you have to say about his coming? He said, you must love his coming. And when you know he's coming, you will live right. Let's talk to Peter. 2 Peter 3, verse 8 through 18, and especially verse 14, he says that when you are looking forward to his coming, you will live in peace, and you will live a pure and blameless life. You know why we love to live in a sin? Because Paul, Peter, Peter says, he said, you know, some of you walk around saying that, well, 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 well. My grandma used to say, he coming. And grandma dead, and he ain't come yet. My daddy said, he coming. And he ain't come yet. Life will go on, folks. They just ain't running their mouth that he coming, he ain't co and he ain't coming. So let us just enjoy life. And we don't live holy. John said that. Peter said that. Paul said that. Titus 2, 11 through 15. Titus 2, 11, 15. He said that all those who have this blessed hope will live a pure life. We live an impure life because we don't believe we, we talk about that he is coming, but we live like he ain't coming. That's a blessed hope. The next big event, Paul says in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, all those who love his appearing, you will be receiving crown of righteousness. Let me ask you a question. And just, I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand. Before you go to sleep, do you pray, Lord? If you come tonight, I'm ready. Or what you do, you just turn the TV off and be gone. You don't look forward to Jesus is coming. That's a blessed hope. So let me lay the foundation. Jesus is coming to rescue his people from his wrath that he's going to pour out on the unjust and unsaved. Don't tell me that God is good. If he is good, he ain't going to judge. From the beginning, he's telling, I am coming and I'm going to judge. 
He's a righteous judge. Judgment will fall on unbelievers. Let me write this one down. We have more living ahead of us than behind us. I'll be 74 in January. But eternity. I got more good days ahead of me. This little drop. Uh-uh. There's the oceans of life ahead of you. Why? Why do I say that? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 2, 9. Paul said, I have not seen, neither ears have heard the great thing God has prepared for me. Say, for me. If God created the whole world, the whole universe, in six days, 2023 years, and he's still preparing a place for me, is something to think about. You know, a couple of days before, everyone in news media, news media, oh, you better come out <clears throat> between 8 and 10 o'clock in the night time. We're going to have a blue moon. And they all came out to see the blue moon because the next one will be in 2037. And I say, if he don't come, I still will be here. <laughs> Ask my wife, that's what I told her. If he don't come, I still will be here. Because one thing I have prayed every day, I'm going to cheat death. I know some of you looking forward, oh, the day I die. I don't even talk like that. The day I am snatched. Not that I have done something bad, like some of you bad mamas, you know it. Girl, I'm going to snatch you. I, I ain't talking about that snatching. Just shoo, be gone. Most people want to go to heaven, but they are never in a hurry to get there. My God, you are so rooted and grounded in this world system. God, God will have to call the jaws of life to pull you all out. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question. In the last 30 days, have you ever thought about you being snatched? I know some of you. When your bill come way over here, Allah come, Jesus. <laughs> That's why he said in Mark 13, he said, no one knows the day or the hour. Mark 13, 32. You know why? Because you're slick. If he said, I am coming, on September, let's say September 11, 2023. You know what? You all going to charge your car to the max. <laughs> You're going to live so large because you know, hey, I don't have to pay the hey, I'm gone. That's the reason he said, no one knows. No one knows. Even Jesus doesn't, whoa. Even Jesus doesn't know. Angels doesn't know. So any fool, let me say it again. I look like Jimmy Swaggart. For those of you who don't know me. <laughs> so any fool who says a date that he's coming on this a day, that, he's a liar. No one knows. You know the great man of God, Dr. Pentecost. 
it is funny, but it makes, makes a point. He was uh, about 97, 99 years old. He, he, he can teach ooh, prophecy like nobody has ever taught. I've, I got all of his books, I study, I studied all that. So when Dallas Seminary built a new apartment, so he moved in. They gave him a nice apartment. The wife had died, so he was there and all that. And the principal of the seminary told him, he said, yeah, you got a new apartment, I'm going to come and see you. I don't know when, but I'm going to come and see you. So, Dr. Pentecost will get up in the morning. He will make his bed, cook his breakfast. He washes dishes, clean it up, put it up, vacuum, do all these things. He did it for two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months. And he said, I'm getting tired of this mess. This man say he coming to see me. Hey, I ain't going to do nothing today. <laughs> he didn't make his bed. The dishes is stacked up in the kitchen and all these things. And before you know. <laughs> and that's how we are living. We're living like he, folks, he who loves his appearing will purify himself. Nobody has to tell you something to live right. We will see him as he is. How is he? He's pure. Pure. He himself is pure. The one who has called you. Now let me make this point. Hope of rapture is an incentive to live holy. You know they always put a carrot in front of you. Oh, you do this and do this. Uh-uh. Are you looking forward to go to heaven? Then why are you living like you ain't going there? Now let me lay this foundation. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. In the Revelation 3.10 says that I will, talking to the church of Philadelphia, he's the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I will deliver you from the hour that is coming. Since you are a child of God, huh? he will deliver you. Folks, I don't care who said what. Darkness is going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. Nations against each other are going to go crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier. Your money will act funnier. And, oh. It's going to get rougher and rougher. But my promise, the Lord said that I will deliver you from, out of. First Thessalonians 1 and 10 say that I will deliver you from the wrath to come. Say it, I am not ordained for the wrath of God. Folks, God is not mad at me. Say it. You're living regularly, you think he is. We say it. God loves me personally, passionately, powerfully, permanently, perfectly. We say all these things. But if it is all there, why aren't we looking forward to his coming? First Thessalonians 5 9 says, God has not appointed me to wrath. I am not scared to see my heavenly father. You know why? Because my sins are forgiven. Washed in the blood. I have a blessed hope. 
So bottom line is this. I am waiting for Christ, not for Antichrist. Anytime anyone act a fool, you say, oh, he might be Antichrist. I'll, I'll be straight up with you. When I came to America in 1974, I was going to school at a Bible study here at TU. And guess who was my Antichrist? Henry Kissinger. Yeah, he was a Jew, Secretary of State, talking to Israel. Folks, I don't care who is going to be Antichrist. You know why? I ain't going to be here. I am not going to be here for Antichrist. So stop wasting your time. <clears throat> as long as you see me, know that there is no Antichrist here. But if you don't see me, but oh, no, 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 no. My statement to Covenant Family Church is, I'm going to heaven and I'm going to hog tie all of you who want to go there. If you don't want to go there, I'm going to leave you here. Don't tell me, oh, pastor says he loved me. I love you enough to tell you, is you, is, or is you going with me? <laughs> Are you going with me? Then why don't you talk about he is coming? See, some of you complain about your, your baba and your daddy and your grandpa, father, uncle and aunt, your brother. You complain about, oh man, the worst. Uh, why don't you talk about heaven and hell? Well, I don't care. Let them go to hell. See, see, see. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 to 7, he said, He that restrains, you know, to print a shirt, I'm a restrainer. Now they will ask you, What does that mean? Say, I'm a restrainer. He said that, he said, the Holy Spirit, uh, the body of Christ, we are restrainer. You know why Antichrist cannot come? Because we are restraining him. He cannot show up while I am alive on this world. You don't know how bad your pastor is. I can check the Antichrist. Fool, you can't show up. You come when I'm gone. So don't waste your time trying to figure out who the Antichrist is. Figure out, is you ready to go? Huh? Let me ask you a question. You know, you, you tell your little kids, oh, we're going to go to Disney World, Disneyland. Man, if they don't understand, is it today? Is it today? Uh, is it this day? You know, I was watching America's Funniest Videos. Yes, I watch America's Funniest Video because there's anything stupid and ignorant, I'm going to watch it on TV. <laughs> My favorite three stooges. I love those kind of things. <laughs> so in that America's Funniest Video, there was the little boy. Huh? Mama picked him up, sits in the front, daddy's driving, and a little boy came here. It was a nice SUV. He said, hey, how you doing? Be doing fine. He said, look in the back. He looked in the back. There's a suitcase. There's all this backpack. He said, where are we going? We're going to Disneyland. And the little boy started crying. I know you promised me, but now I see we're going there. I've been telling you, Jesus said, you, I'm coming. 
God is not a man that he should lie. Neither a son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will. But let me ask you a question. Do you look forward to his coming? So let me break it down. The reason we don't understand, I'm trying to preach about 100 messages in 45 minutes. We have no understanding the difference between first coming and second coming. We just lump everything in one, and we have no clue. So let me go to Prophecy 101. Here is the best thing we I can explain to you. When he comes the first time, he is coming in the sky for his people. When he comes second time, he is coming with his people. First one is in the sky. Second one will be in the Old Testament. Jesus in all the books of the Bible. I just plugged that one in. For those of you who do not go to Bible fellowship, remain ignorant. You don't know what I'm talking about. Zechariah 14 verse 4 say, when he comes the second time, his foot will touch on the Mount Olive. It will split into two. Why? Because in Acts, the first chapter, verse number 9, the angel of the Lord say, why are you all gazing up in the sky? The same Jesus. Say the same Jesus. You saw him going. He's coming back. So please understand this. There's a difference between first coming and the second coming. And second coming, you can predict. Study the book of Revelation. Study the book of Daniel. But I just want to talk to you because look here. I am coming back with him. It, the chill went through me right now. God, Lord, I'm coming with him. King of kings, Lord of lords, he and his people, we're coming back with him on this earth. Why? To rule and to reign. Those who have been faithful here, you will rule and reign. Like I told you in uh, New heaven and new earth, I still will be the mayor of North Tulsa. Write that down, and when that happens, I will hunt you as a boy. Didn't I tell you? I'm going to rule and reign. And those of who are not faithful, guess what? You will serve me then. You ain't serving me now. You ain't serving nothing here. But maybe I'll put you to work. No one knows. So if you don't know when he's coming. My God. That ought to keep you on your toes. When he comes, let me find let him find me in faith, in love, in mercy, in looking just like him. Don't let him come when you're fighting with your wife. You are so quiet here in this church today. Don't you, don't let him come when you're loaded. Lord, come on uh, Sunday. That's when I be in the church. But Friday night, Lord Jehovah. You don't know. Okay, let me say this one. 
I'm about to close. For those who are visiting, what does it mean? Nothing. I just said it. <laughs> because you go to Baptist church and say, oh, I'm about to close. Okay, he's going to close. No, 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 no. That's my first closing. Okay. You know, I talk to fools all day. Oh, sorry. I talk to fools all day long. I, I, I start the conversation, make them think. I say, oh, let's, let's just talk. Are you thinking about tomorrow? Oh, no. They, they put on their religious. No, no. You don't think about tomorrow? No. Don't you remember Jesus say, take no thought about tomorrow? Matthew 6, 25, as a fool, he talks about you worrying about tomorrow, what you're going to eat and drink and sleep. That's what he's talking about. But what I am talking about, you better worry about tomorrow. Because you don't know what will happen. So all I am saying, don't stop thinking about the mix next main event. We will continue next Sunday. But let me bring it down to this conclusion. The disciples came to Jesus, including Judas. He gave them power to go and cast out demons. And they came back, hey, it works, Jesus. What works? Oh, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dumb speak. Oh, Lord, it works. And Jesus said, Luke 10 and 20, Don't rejoice because the demons obey you. Rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21, 27. Those folks whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Here we go, conclusion. All eyes on me now. Heaven is a place where everybody knows your name. God knows your name. I know by sheep, by their name, I call them. But let me tell you something. Hell is a place of no names. Hell is a place. Everybody's name. Hell is a place that nobody's name. I'll prove it to you. Look the 16th chapter. Bible says there was a poor man by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus meaning the Lord is my helper. Huh? Did you read the whole book, a uh, whole story? He doesn't say a word. He didn't say that in my heart I believe with my mouth I confess Jesus is Lord. Now I'm saved on my way to heaven. Elijah don't say nothing. When he died, he went. Why? He had a name. Lord is my helper. Lazarus. And Bible says, and there was a rich man. Listen to me. He had a name on the earth. But your name on the earth is not recognized in heaven. You may have a big name. But it is not recognized in heaven. And guess what? Even in hell, nobody knows your name. Why? Because they are all in torment. Worried about their pain and I'm in agony. You can live large here, baby. You can live large. Drive the baddest car, wear the best clothes, eat filet mignon every single day. You can live large. But if your name is not written in a Lamb's book of life. Yeah. 
you will split hell wide open. Heaven has a name of you. Hell doesn't even have a name and you're going there. You don't even have to make a reservation. You don't have to make a reservation to go to hell. But you got to make a reservation to go to heaven. That's where he will call your name. Heaven knows your name. Nobody knows your name here, baby. Yeah, nobody recognize me. Don't worry about it. A day is coming when heaven will recognize you. All that you have done behind the scene. God will recognize you. Are you ready for the next event? We will continue next week. Every head bow, every eye close. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, all those who are listening to me, all those who are watching me on the YouTube, Father God, I pray, heaven is a prepared place for people who are prepared to go there. Father Lord, for adventure, somebody is here. Somebody who is watching me. They say they are Christian, but it is a bunch of words. I pray you will touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. Is anybody here say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to the Lord. I've been coming to church. I've been doing this. I've been doing that thing. But today I want to make sure my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Father Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. The next big event. We will continue next Sunday. And I will break it down how it will happen. Thank you in Jesus' name. Pray for us between 2 and 3. Amen. Be blessed.